Tanishta, the reports of how and why the Garda removed two children from their families in Tala and at Lowen are very disturbing on a number of levels. The fact that the children have been returned to their families has to be welcomed and we must acknowledge the extreme distress the families went through over the last few days. While the Gardaí acted in good faith under Section 12 of the 1991 Child Care Act, which states, where a Garda has a reasonable grounds for believing that there is an immediate and serious risk to the health and welfare of a child. Following the press coverage of a child in Greece, there was obviously an increased number of anonymous calls to the Garda, which were concentrated on Roma families. Questions need to be answered why actions were taken, in particular, on this minority group. Let's be totally honest here, Tornishta. Would these extreme actions be acceptable if the families involved were Irish nationals? Children should only be removed in extreme circumstances and normally applications are made, private hearings take place. This did not happen in this case and we need to know why. There were over 9,000 such applications last year alone, but as hearings are held in private, there was little media coverage. Minister Shatter has requested an internal report from the Garda Commissioner so that lessons can be learned, and Minister Fitzgerald is also doing an independent report of these cases. Tornishta, if there were genuine and legitimate concerns by the Garda, serious questions need to be asked, answered. Why were the other children left with the families, and why was it that one of the parents could not have stayed with the children while the DNA tests were being done. Thank you. Why is it that the HSC was not asked to make an assessment on the families prior to the removal of the children from their homes? Thank you. Uh, Ken Corley, well, first of all, I agree with Deputy Troy uh, that uh, uh, the removal of the children from these two families, the reports that we've heard of this, uh, are very disturbing at a number of levels. Secondly, I join with him in welcoming the fact that the children have been returned uh, to the families, and I acknowledge, as he has, uh, the distress that this has caused, uh, no doubt to the children, first of all, but also uh, to the families concerned, and I acknowledge uh, that uh, Deputy Troy um, accepts the guard the uh, acted in good faith uh, in, uh, in the matter. I think the first thing here is that uh, nobody should jump to conclusions. Uh, I think it's the first lesson that needs to be learned from this. Uh, I think the, that what we need to establish uh, are the facts and indeed the answers to the questions uh, that uh, Deputy Troy has raised. That's why the Minister for Justice has asked the Garda Commissioner uh, to prepare a report uh, on these two cases and why the Minister for Children has asked the HSE to prepare a report and both of those reports uh, will go to the uh, Children's Ombudsman, uh, Emily Logan, and I think we should see uh, that played, uh, played through. Certainly what's uh, in my mind about this is, first of all, uh, when these, uh, I'd like to know the, the nature uh, of the complaints or information that was given to the Gardaí, which gave rise in the first place uh, to the visit uh, to the, the family homes, how that was interrogated. Um, uh, and then I think the issue that then arises is the question of uh, the immediate and serious risk to the health and welfare of the children, which is the, are the circumstances where a child may be removed uh, from, uh, from a family setting. Uh, I'd like to know what was the immediate and uh, serious uh, threat to their health or safety, uh, which was uh, considered to justify their removal from, the, uh, from their family. I'd like to know how the decision was made, by whom it was, uh, was made, and I'd like also to know um, you know, if there were other ways of dealing with whatever the issue was that uh, confronted the, the Gardaí at the time, short of the children being removed uh, from their home and from the, uh, from the family uh, setting. I think these are all questions uh, that the investigations and the reports that uh, Minister Shatter and Minister Fitzgerald have asked for uh, will uh, have to uh, address. 
I don't think any of us should prejudge what the answers to those are, are going to be. But I do think that we need to get uh, those answers and the information and the reports placed in the hands of the uh, Children's Ombudsman. Thank you. Deputy Troy, one minute. Thank you. Tarnish, thank you for your reply. We can't go back to the days of see no evil, hear no evil and speak no evil. We all have a responsibility and we do not need to see these cases being used as a deterrent to protecting children. At the same time, we have to prevent over-intrusion in family lives. A right balance has to be achieved. But one lesson that can be learned is that the government needs to publish the legislation which will allow for proper procedures and protocols for dealing with child protection issues. This was promised over two years ago. The professionals working in the health service in child protection, as well as the Gardaí, are operating in a legislative vacuum, and we need the Children First guidelines put on a legislative basis back up in law. As I said, this legislation is overdue. It was promised over two years ago, and it is an essential part of ensuring that we have a robust child protection issue. So can I ask, can the Tornish to give a clear time frame as to when that legislation will come before the House? And can I also ask, in relation to the reports that are being carried out, can you confirm why the Garda report is internal and not independent? And can you confirm when the reports are concluded, will they be given to the families concerned as well as the Ombudsman? Thank you. Well, first of all, um, the um, legislation uh, we expect will be published uh, this, uh, this session, and as you know, uh, Minister Fitzgerald has uh, been uh, bringing forward the guidelines and uh, the, uh, the legislation. Um, secondly, I think it's important to recognise that you know, this isn't, I think, an issue of legislation. This is an issue of practice. And I think that the, the, um, what has to be, I think, addressed here is you know, what actually happens in practice. We can have all the legislation and all the guidelines in, uh, in the world. Uh, you know, we all, it's already established the circumstances. The, it's Sorry. already established the circumstances. The, the, it's already established the circumstances in which the Gardaí may intervene uh, in uh, a family situation and where children uh, are removed for their own safety. Now, the question that arises is, you know, what happened in this case, and we have to we have to establish what those facts uh, will be. <coughs> uh, the intention is is that uh, those reports be prepared over the next. Uh, two to three weeks they'll be given to the um, uh, children's uh, ombudsman uh, the children's ombudsman will liaise with uh, the families uh, in relation to uh, the um, in, in relation to the reports i think the dimension which you which you raised earlier which is the question of whether um, a any um, uh, group any uh, group of, of, of people in our in our country uh, whether it is people of a particular ethnic background or uh, any other group of people um, I mean, clearly should not be uh, given uh, extra or special uh, attention in, in respect of, uh, of child safety matters. And uh, I would be very concerned if there were any element uh, of that uh, in, in these cases. But that's something clearly uh, that the reports that will be prepared will have to address. Thank you.